Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Rainer on Leadership. Uh, we've got a, a, a more difficult subject today, um, but one that I think it's good to talk about, one that um, should be talked about more, and that's the just, just this issue of mental health problems or the the idea of mental health in ministry and pastors um, making sure that they take care of themselves and church leaders making sure they take care of themselves. Dad, I'm assuming that when you were going through seminary and when you were in the pastor, this was a very rare point of co conversation. I remember zero conversations in the classroom, in any class, even in pastoral care and ministry. I remember zero about mental health, particularly mental health issues with the pastor. Uh, I don't remember dealing with uh, overt mental health issues where someone said my child has a mental health problem or I have a mental health problem. Even the word depression was rarely, rarely mentioned uh, when I was a pastor. And it wasn't that it wasn't there. It just it was not mentioned nearly as much as it is today. And I think the fact that we talk about it is a very good thing because it needs to be out in the open. It needs to be treated. Uh, it needs support. It needs encouragement. And goodness gracious, you, you and I probably can think of five or six close friends right now who are struggling with mental health issues. Many of them are pastors. So it's, it's, it's a real thing, Sam. Um, I wish it had been dealt with more. What, what started, one of the things that really became a, a point of awareness when I was a pastor was AIDS, uh, when it was considered this epidemic that was going to kill all of society. And I remember the first church member that got AIDS and told me that he had AIDS and, uh, all of the, not only the physical agony that he went through, but all the mental health things that he went through. But people would talk more about the AIDS than they would his depression or mental health issues. And so this is relatively new the way it is open, but I think the openness is good. And that's where we go with how should a church respond when a pastor has mental health issues. Yeah, and you bring up the AIDS epidemic, and just for some of our younger listeners, maybe my my age or younger, um, people have forgotten how big of a deal that was mm -hmm. in the 1980s and the amount of – the level of fear that people had over AIDS. We, we understand it so much more now, and it's not even really a, a conversation point anymore, but there was a great deal of fear around that, and it, it doesn't necessarily tie in exactly to what we're talking about. Um, but it is connected. Um, mm -hmm. And I, believe it or not, um, one of the first issues that I dealt with in this world when it comes to depression and mental health was the exact same thing. Was it one, I won't get into too much detail here. He has since passed on, but um, he it was a deacon in a former church, we'll just say that, who um, told me that he was, he had AIDS. Um, and it was, it was just, you know, it was all consuming to him. Um, and it was, uh, it was a very big deal. So, uh, that's just an interesting kind of historical point there, but let's fast forward a little bit to where we are today. Um, one in four pastors say they have struggled with mental health issues. One in four say they've had some sort of struggle with mental health. Um, and then 17% of pastors say that they've been clinically diagnosed with some mental health issues. Um, that and I did not do the research on how does that compare to the larger population, but I'm assuming that's that's I would assume that's um, close to what you know is normal out in the the broader culture. You know, one in um, four, one in five, one in six really struggling with this, and then you know one in five, one in ten that have been diagnosed with it. So this is a prevalent issue, so we can't ignore it. And I do think that silence is part of the problem because it almost becomes this off limits sort of subject matter. And silence was the problem initially with AIDS. Un, unfounded fear. I, I guess the unknown is not necessarily unfounded fear, but I remember Sam, the first time I visited that AIDS patient and the garb I had to put on to go into his room just because they did not know how, how, it, it might be, is it contagious? Is it by touch? Is it by air? All of those questions had not been answered at that time. But of all those things you just said, what I think is more encouraging 
is you said roughly, I think it was 17% of pastors, if I remember the number right, uh, say they've been clinically diagnosed. Is that the right stat? Yeah, I mean, that's the stat that I pulled for some research. I mean, it's a survey. And, and, it's and one survey, I, but, well, the but reason I would assume I mean, it's correct. Well, the reason I'm encouraged by it is because that means those pastors are admitting they have a problem. In my era, it would you, you probably would not have admitted it. Very few would have admitted that they had a mental health problem, even though many of us would have had mental health problems in my era as well. So I like the fact that the first thing that we say in this podcast is let's get rid of the taboo label, label. Let's deal with it candidly, yes, compassionately, but let's do away with the taboo, taboo love, uh, label and let's talk about it openly. I know not all pastors can do that among their church members, but pastors do have places where they can talk about it and feel safe when doing so. Yeah, I would not recommend that you start with your church members if you're if this is an issue you're struggling with. I would start with a professional. <laughs> um, you know, if you have mental health struggles, you may not know the degree. It, it may not be as severe, or it could be more severe. You just don't know. So the place to start is with a professional. Now. You know, you may have your confidants, you, you may have the people that you're close with and some friends that you feel comfortable sharing things with, and you may tell them, hey, you know, I'm going to go get this checked out. I, I am, I'm going to stay on top of this, and I'm going to make sure that I stay healthy. Uh, sure, share that. But I, I think the place to start is, is not in the pulpit, <laughs> you know, right. guys that might have a problem. Um, I, you know, if, if you're at that point, you've probably waited way too long to deal with the issue. Um, the place to start is with a professional. Yeah, let's take the taboo label off. Um, you know, this is um, mental illness does not signal a lack of faith. Let's just say that out loud. You know, it's it, it's not if, if you have mental health problems, it's it's not necessarily an indicator that your faith is in a really bad place. Um, it may just be that you have some issues that are mental health issues that you need to deal with. Um, and I, I do believe that pastors need to seek that regular help um, through trusted um, trusted professionals. Let me put it that way. And everyone's definition of professional is a little different, of course, but um, th these are people who know what they're doing. You need to go see somebody who has the right credentials and who can walk you through things that they see all the time. Our, our title is how a church should respond when a pastor has mental health issues. And the first thing that we say is uh, don't, don't, don't put your pastor in isolation. Don't ostracize your pastor or refuse to talk about it. If that pastor is talking about it, that's one of the things we want to say, but uh, church members may see warning signs as well with pastor Sam, uh, the same kind of warning signs they would see with others who have mental health illness and, that's not always some kind of personality or quirk or issue. It really could be a sign. Yeah, if we've removed the taboo label, then we should be able to feel free to speak about this candidly, as we mentioned. Um, and, you know, there are probably, there are times when you see these warning signs and, yeah, don't dismiss the warning signs. Don't pass them off as, well, that's just their personality or they may have some quirks or they may have some issues. If you do see things that are true warning signs, then I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Obviously, you want to start with the person. I mean, if you're talking about your pastor, I mean, going to your pastor and, and saying, well, I, I think you've got some mental health problems. I mean, that may not well, be the best approach. Um, <laughs> you know, not the most might, exact word or tone, I'd tell you that for sure. Yeah, yeah. You might put somebody on the defensive there a little much, and I can understand why somebody would be defensive if you approach them that way. My point is, you need to address when you see the warning signs with someone. You need to, that, that you know it may not be a reconciliation issue; it may be an accountability issue. And you know, particularly if you are somebody who's close to the pastor, I know I've got several deacons that I've given them permission to speak into my life, and they are supposed to be the ones that if there are some warning signs, they're supposed to be talking to me. I, I may have my blinders on. I may not even feel what I'm feeling, if that makes sense. I, I may not see what what I'm supposed to see. And that's the that's kind of the definition of a, a blind spot in your life. Um, so, if you are a pastor, 
One, you need to invite some people in who you trust to be able to speak into your life this way from an accountability perspective. If your only accountability is people who aren't a part of your church, if your only accountability are people who are in a different state and they don't interact with you on a regular basis, you, they're not going to see it. You know, I've got some buddies that are really close that live in other places. They, they're not part of my church. They don't live in the state. They you know, live elsewhere. Well, they're not going to see those warning signs because it's, we just don't interact enough, that we don't see each other enough. Um, so if you're a pastor, you need to invite some people in, give them that permission. And then if you are that person, you do need to speak up when you see these warning signs. So we've got a pastor. Maybe there's a suspicion or speculation that there may be some struggles going on in the pastor's life. Um, maybe you've seen some of the warning signs and you are truly concerned for your pastor. You are truly concerned that that pastor needs help and you want that pastor to get professional help. You need to decide as a church member, are you the person to go to that pastor? Or maybe there's someone else in the church that that pastor would trust more, not to suggest that that pastor doesn't trust you, but the pastor may know someone better, may be more comfortable with someone. There may be some type of like in your church accountability relationship, but somehow, some way you want to give this pastor clear help and to get a professional opinion of, is this really, is this really some type of mental health issue? And if it is, where, how do we go? Where do we go from here? Yeah, and where you go from there is just, you know, giving giving a clear pathway to professional help. And frankly, I think the church should pay for it. Um, I'll just put put it out there. Uh, you know, certainly get the process started and don't if if there are potentially some issues there and and, and as we've seen in the stats, there, there likely is for some, you know, some level of help that's needed. Well, I think the church should step up and say, "Hey, we care about you." Um, we're, we're going to provide, you know, we're going to pay for these services and not, not to give any, not to give anyone an excuse to just back out of it because of money or what have you. A lot of pastors, you know, struggle financially. So, Hey, if you really care about your pastor, make sure that you, you are providing not just good benefits if it's a full-time position, uh, but, but, but also the, the professional services that they need to, to stay mentally healthy. Uh, you know, a sh when a shepherd gets to a place of not being a, in a healthy spot mentally, I mean, that, that's the impact of, of that is quite broad on the church, potentially. Um, so it's good for the church to get out in front of these things. And the reality of it is having dealt with a few, maybe several, who have had mental health issues, there are many times that typical health insurance does not cover these needs, does not cover the counseling, the therapy that may be needed. I can think of three or four right now who are having to pay out of pocket because of that issue. And uh, it's 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 a challenge. If you truly love your pastor, provide a way for that pastor to be able to get the help and to pay for the help. Yeah. And the next thing that I would say, if you're talking about from the perspective of the church, um, you need to create a plan based on the severity of the problem. Um, you, you know, when we talk about somebody has a mental health issue, there, there is a, a lack of mental health. Well, that, you know, that could be any number of things. It could be a minor problem that's easily dealt with, or it could be a, a very severe problem that could take years to deal with. So you, you need that professional help, one, to get a clear diagnosis because you can't have a good prognosis until you have a diagnosis. You can't know what to do until you understand what's happening. Um, so you start with the professional and then you create a plan based on the severity of the problem. You know, if, a, for instance, I mean, let's go to, to the extreme of extremes, right? A pastor has a moral failure. You know, the mental health has, um, has gotten to deteriorated to the point to where they, they've really messed up. They sinned. And it's a it's a moral failure of sorts. Well, that's a different case, and and sometimes that requires the dismissal of a pastor. Obviously, many times that requires the dismissal of a pastor. That's different than I've had this gnawing sense of ongoing anxiety. Right? That you know that's those are completely different. They, they're both in the they're both in the world or the universe of mental health, but they're way different things. So. You know, when we say mental health, it's, it, you know, we're in the Baptist drive. It's like saying Baptist, right? It's like, what kind of, you know, this, this Baptist is this huge thing with different types. And mental health is this big thing with, you know, all sorts of, you know, 
degrees of problems. Um, let's let's get let's understand what we're dealing with first, and then create a plan based upon the severity of the problem. You have mentioned this, but I think it's worth mentioning again. Any mental health issue is going to have a long-term impact on the pastor and the church potentially. And so you really, as a church member, whether you're the one who initiates uh, this process with the pastor or someone else does, you need to realize you're not only doing this for your pastor, you're doing this for the good of the bride at the church as well. It is something that is vitally needed. Don't delay, don't wait. If you have to find someone to, to intercede with the pastor, do so. But if you don't do it, the long-term impact of the church is going to be felt as well as the pastor. Yeah, I think we we need to get into uh, a we need to add to our church culture this idea that we're all going to deal with our problems in a way that is appropriate. Um, that includes the pastor. Um, we live in a fallen world. Our our bodies will fail us. Our minds will fail us at times. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about mental health here from the perspective, not, not, a, not from the perspective of sin. Um, you know, we live in a fallen world and sin has done that, but not every mental health problem is due to sin. Um, and that's kind of, that's really a, a distinction we need to make is, you know, is there some sin involved here? And if that's the case, then there's obviously a spiritual remedy as well. Uh, but in many cases with pastors, it, there's there's not even necessarily a quote unquote sin issue. It's just a mental health issue. Um, and if we can all start dealing with this in a way that's helpful for the pastor, then we can all start dealing with it in a way that's helpful for the church. Um, we, you know, you put you put this on the table in the sense of, hey, we're we're not going to stigmatize this. We're going to remove the taboo label, all the cliche sayings that you could use. Um, and and we're, we're gonna you know if the pa pastors have to lead out, pastors have to lead by example. So one great way for you to lead by example as a pastor is to get the mental health help that you need, um, and then that way others can know that they can too. And I think that's an important thing. And then the long term impact is very beneficial to the church because we're having open, honest conversations again. You don't want to overshare in the pulpit. We're not, I am not recommending that you get in front of everybody and tell them everything. That is unwise in almost every case. Like you, not everyone needs to know everything, but somebody needs to know something in order for you to get the help that you need. This is an issue that is not going to end anytime soon. This is an issue that is probably going to continue in its prominence. And as pastors are dealing with church members and others who have their own mental health struggles, please, church member, don't forget that your pastor is a person just like other church members. And that pastor, many of them are going to have struggles. Sam and I can think of many, many in our relationships. Even now, it is a real thing. And the best thing that the church can do is to help the pastor because that helps the church. Good discussion, Sam. I want to just finish this off with a thank you, and that's a thank you to California Baptist University. Sam and I went to CBU, California Baptist University, for our speaking engagement oh, a couple, three years ago. I don't remember exactly when, and that is just one beautiful campus. I mean, you, you cannot help but like it uh, when you're there. And I'm not talking about the beauty of the campus to talk to you about this program from California Baptist University, but it is a program where high schoolers can get college credit. Uh, college credit in advance. Um, so sophomore, junior, seniors, uh, it's open to homeschool. It's open to private, public school students. Uh, you have eight week sessions, uh, summer, fall, spring. Each semester has two sessions and, uh, you can, you can go to one. You can go to both. Now here's, here's, here's the really incredible news. The first class is free. The first course is free. And then after that, there is a significant discount. As a matter of fact, that per hour credit, instead of being $613, is $166. Incredible. So I know some of you know high school students. You know, maybe some who are about to get into high school. Uh, think about this opportunity for them to get college credit on the front end. They can use it if they go to California Baptist. And in most cases, they'll be able to use it wherever they go to college and it will transfer readily. So, uh, you'd, of course, you'd have to check with your transferring college if you don't go to California Baptist. But for most of them, that would be the case. Continue to be with us at 
Rainer on Leadership, continue to be with us as we talk about these issues affecting the local church. And even though you may think that mental health is an issue that is maybe not on the table most of the time for Rainer on Leadership and practical church leadership and ministry issues, it is because it affects the leader of the church, the under shepherd, the pastor. Remember that the next time you think that you might be able to help a pastor, especially a pastor who has mental health issues. Thanks for being a part of Rain on Leadership. We'll see you, hear you. And if you're YouTube, hi, give us subscribe, give us a rating, give us a review on your podcast apps. Uh, just, just get the word out that we're here. This is a ministry that is funded by our sponsors so that those who are listening or watching can have the benefit of it. So let them know you appreciate it by letting us know you appreciate our being here for you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next episode.